What's up everyone? Welcome back. Look at how amazing, so beautiful out here today. Today is the final day for the contest tank. It's the photo taking day and it's gonna be a fun one. It's also kind of nerve-wracking but we're gonna have a, a good day, I hope. So the fish room is starting to come along one step at a time. Right now um, we're in May, towards the end of May and today is also the day that these babies of my angelfish pair have hatched out. You can see them free swimming in there. That is amazing. And also in this tank, we've got eggs that are just about to hatch. So really, really cool. What a special day it is today. And then we've got this tank over here, the contest tank. You can see I've put a little black curtain here just to block out some light. And we're going to put another curtain up later to block out even more light, maybe over here as well. But the photo taking will be in the evening, so the fish tank lights will be still on. It's not really a good idea to take your contest photo late at night because that's when the plants sleep. For my tank, it doesn't really matter because I'm not using stem plants. But if you've got a lot of stem plants in your tank, it's not really a good idea to take your picture late at night because the stem plants will all close up. They close up and kind of go to sleep. You can see right now my stem plants in this tank are opened um, but at night they will all close and go to sleep. It's kind of an interesting sight to see but today we're going to be working on this tank a little bit before the contest photo. I've got to do some fine tuning. Just um, take out some plants. It is a little bit overgrown in some areas. Clear up some algae where there is like over here in between this driftwood and the glass. The driftwood is touching the glass so it's pretty hard to get there but I'm gonna clean that all up and we're going to prepare this tank for the final photo shoot. Oh, we're living in the present mm, But our mind is in the past, past Not knowing what we lose Don't know So I've cleaned the tank up a little bit. It's, um, I don't know if it's like the, the perfectness that I want, but I think it's okay. This is nature style, so I'm pretty happy with it. I think we'll get a nice looking photo, hopefully. My friend, uh, Mr. Naito is here today. He's like the camera expert and he's gonna be teaching me and helping me out with this photo. And yeah, I hope we can get a nice picture today, but you can see he's setting up all his things. Look at this equipment. You can see his tripod right here. Super durable, thick quality. Carbon fiber, I think. If you compare it to mine, take a look at this. I'm using a Manfrotto tripod, but mine is super skinny and it's kind of flimsy, you know? And you can see the difference. Like, look at that. It's kind of crazy. Man, it's inspiring me to um, get a better camera gear. And you can see his camera right here. This is what we'll be using today. What is your camera? This is Alpha 7 R3. Wow, that is incredible. Alpha 7 R3. Such a cool camera. Man, you can see he's got the body kit uh, just to make it more bulky and man, more sturdy. That is cool. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take all the equipment off of the tank uh, because for a contest photo, if you want the best results, you gotta take everything out. So you take your CO2 diffuser, take that out of the tank, you put, you take your CO2 bubble counter, take that off of the tank, you gotta take your filter pipes, the lily pipes, pull that off, the heater, sensor, you gotta take that off too, so I'm gonna take everything off and it's gonna look super clean, so yeah, I'll see you guys in just a moment. Alright, and take a look at that, the lights are on at 100% right now, both Chihiros Vivid RGB2s. We've got the shades on. These lights are amazing. You can adjust them. Before this, the lights were on 30%. Um, it was very low setting, but these plants didn't need that much light. So they were growing on 30% light, red, green, and blue, each of them at 30%. But for the photo, we want as much light as possible. So we're going with 100%. You can see I've taken the filter pipes off the CO2 diffuser is off, the angelfish are looking amazing. And now, I've got these black panels set up here because we want to block as much light coming out. We want to keep all the light behind 
the tank. So next up, I'm going to be putting this black screen. It's a little styrofoam board. It's black in color and we're going to stick it up at the top here so we don't get any of this light leaching out towards the camera. And you can see Mr. Naito here is setting up the camera. Uh, really, really cool stuff. And I'm also learning a lot about this stuff. So yeah, hopefully one day I can take my own photos. But yeah, he's going to be helping me out today. Take a look at that. Man, I, I really hope it turns out great. The angelfish, I just can't get over how good they look. Man, I think I've never seen them this amazing before. The red coloration and that black bar. That black bar just really stands out. One of my favorite, the Manakapuru red shoulder or red head. Manakapuru angelfish. Okay, I'm gonna get the board up. I'm gonna quit talking now and let's get this thing done. All right, and here I am talking once again, probably going to be talking a lot more, but you can see we've got this black panel up. This is what it looks like. And now, uh, Mr. Naito says he's got the camera set in place, perfect centered. So now it's just my job to get these fish to swim the way I want them to. And to do that, I'm going to need patience as well as a little broomstick. I'm going to use this to try to push them over, get them to move to where I want them to. It's going to be tricky, but this is how I saw a professional do it. But the professional, he was even more creative. Um, he had his own stick. It wasn't a broomstick, but he had like a customized stick where like this, the broom part, the brush part of this broom was like a pad. It was a plastic pad or something and he would just tap the tank and all the fish would go the opposite direction. So it was very easy for him to take pictures of uh, fish schooling together. And I've got to do that in the future. But for, for right now, you can see the angel fish are just doing their own things, minding their own business, probably wondering why the water is not moving at all. So yeah, we got to get this done quite quick. So I think I'm going to do a time lapse now and we'll try our best to get a good shot of this tank. I also forgot it's a good idea to wear dark clothing. I should have worn a black shirt today, but I kind of forgot to. Um, so that you minimize as much reflections as possible. And Mr. Naito too, wearing a black shirt, and he's even got his own black barrier. That is kind of cool. It's like a little fort, like, like his own uh, wall where he's defending his own side. So pretty cool. Yeah, I like that, um, but yeah. Back to the time lapse. I also forgot one more thing, sorry guys, but you gotta check out his Instagram page. He's got some amazing pictures of landscape, landscape photography, and even pictures of his own aquarium. So you guys gotta check it out. And he's also taking some amazing pictures of birds where they're flying, like he's got probably one of the best photography skills. So yeah, I'm really lucky that he's helping me out here. That was a pretty long process. It just turned 11 p.m. We've been doing this since... I think we started at around 6.30. And yeah, we've just... Well, at first I was trying to clean the tank, last minute clean up and take off all the equipment. And then we've been just doing this for a few hours. So the fish are stressed out. We've taken enough photos, a couple hundred photos. And now we just got to pick which ones the best. You can see the cardinals are all schooling together, but they must be kind of stressed out because I've been sticking a stick in there trying to move the fish around and I think it actually worked. We got a few great shots of these angel fish. I'll put it up on the screen right now for you guys to see. But yeah, it's very difficult to get these guys to swim together and especially because I've got other schools of fish. Usually you don't do that. Usually for a contest photo you have one type of fish, but for me, I'm just weird. I like to do things differently, so I had a bunch of different types of fish, kind of a community style, and I just think that's better. It's like a nature aquarium, so I want to kind of promote this to everyone. Just uh, do what you like and do what you enjoy. Just, yeah, be different as well. 
So this is my style. Hopefully we get some good results. If not, that's okay. Um, but also the checkerboard cichlids, we didn't get to see much of them during the photo. They are very small and they also blend in well with their surroundings. So yeah, hopefully they're in that contest picture, but if they're not, that's also okay. So now it's time to pack everything up. I'm going to take these panels off and I'm going to put the filter back on. Uh, hopefully the bacteria that's in the filter is still good uh, because it's been turned off for a long time. That's not, that's not a very good idea. Tomorrow I'm going to leave the lights off for the entire day uh, because today the lights were on 100% for a couple of hours and I also want to let the fish sleep in tomorrow. It's kind of weird saying that but yeah, they're, they're probably very sleepy right now. Usually they'd be asleep. And Mr. Naito-san here, he's going to pack his things up and... Alright, it's been so long since the last clip of this video. I've just... After that last photo, the photo shoot that I did, that you guys just saw in the last clip, I just kind of took a break uh, with the contest tank. I just stopped doing any maintenance or any trimming of any sort. And I just top up the tank once in a while. I didn't even do water changes. And the fish are all doing perfectly okay. Let's take a closer look at this tank and I'll explain more in a moment. But after that contest photo that we took, I just kind of wanted to take a break from it because when you set up contest tanks, you're constantly maintaining the tank every week, almost every single day. I'm putting my hand in the tank, adjusting some stuff, putting moss here, trimming and just playing around. And you can now see there's a lot of algae on the glass. Look at the pipes, I haven't even cleaned the pipes. So I gotta really do that, but I'm going to dismantle this tank now because just a couple days ago I got the results of the tank and it was 358 out of 2,083 people I think, which is not a bad ranking, I'm really happy with that, but it wasn't as high as my expectations. I really, really wanted to get in the top 100 again, but it doesn't always go the way you plan, so uh, nothing really I can do about that. We'll just try harder next year. You can see the angelfish look amazing though, this guy. This I think is the dominant one in this tank. You can see his reds coming out and the black bar is really strong. But yeah, I also love right now how all the Valisneria have kind of reached the surface of the water, the tank. I want to give a huge shout out to my friend who helped me with a photo of this tank. I'll link his Instagram in the description below so make sure to go check him out. He's a professional photographer and he keeps aquariums as well and planted tanks and his aquariums are much better than mine. I think I've said that before in one of my previous videos but right now the fish room is kind of messy. I am moving stuff around, playing with some rocks for the next scape. I don't think I'll be using rocks, but we'll see. I think I might do another driftwood aquascape. And you can see all the tanks, got the nature style, Iwagumi, the Dutch style that I just planted. By the time this video is live, this tank probably looks completely different. And yeah, the fish room is getting better and better slowly. Yeah, it's still a long way to go though. Hopefully we've made some progress by the time you're watching this, but you can see a bunch of baby juvenile rainbow fish in there swimming around and then in these little containers they've got so many more like they're kind of hard to see but yeah all these Bosmani F1s the parents are wild caught Bosmani rainbows which you don't see all the time right now they look kind of faded in this tank because I put some gravel in here but yeah when they're in breeding mode their colors are just so beautiful. So I've also received some comments from some of you saying that I should have two contest tanks so that I can keep the current one running and have another one to play with for the next contest. But I, that is a good idea, I really want that, but right now I don't really have the space for that. And it's kind of expensive to get a full set going. I'd have to get lights again, another tank, which is really expensive when it's four feet, 120 centimeter, a cabinet. Well, I could DIY one, but yeah, I mean, even DIY, there's cost in that. And then I'd have to get a filter, the filter's inside. I mean, I've thought about it, but I don't think that's the way to go right now. It's also a lot of work, a lot of maintenance. If I have two contest tanks running together, there's just so much more time uh, involved having to maintain all those tanks. And I've still got all the other tanks in the fish room that I have to maintain. So I kind of want it to, I kind of want this fish room to have some show tanks, but not too many. 
So, yeah, so that's kind of the plan. And I'm going to move this tank in the future. I don't know when. I don't know if I can do it this year or it'll have to be next year or the year after. I'm not, I'm still not sure when, but this tank is eventually going to come up against this wall right here. And this, this little corner right here, hopefully, will be the contest tank corner. This, this little corner right here. And then maybe we can add a sofa here. I'll have to move this thing out of this room. And then right here, these two tanks will have their own stand. So I'll have an African cichlid tank on a stand right there. And then I'll move that planted cryptocorin tank over here and have it on a stand kind of like this a DIY stand. It's kind of like spreading out tanks and just having less in one area. Like I don't like stacking tanks like that too much. Even though I've got tanks stacking over there, like those are different kind of systems. So yeah, these are more show tanks and I kind of want them separated from each other. So that's kind of the plan. Enough of me talking though. We'll work on this and slowly I'll update you guys on YouTube and you guys can see the progress and hopefully you guys will enjoy it as much as I'm gonna enjoy it. But as always, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, make sure to subscribe if you're not already subscribed for more projects like this. I also do fish room, no, fish room tours. Yeah, sometimes I do fish room tours and fish store tours as well. And we're gonna have more fish store tours coming forward, so hope you guys are ready for that. Be sure to comment something below, and if you wanna support this channel even more, you can consider becoming a member, and I'll see you guys next time.